Ah, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, gonna be drinking. Look, look, it's gonna be smoking. <clears throat> look, look, it's gonna be swearing. Ha, look, look, you've been warned. So look, look. Here coming three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. Bang! Welcome everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on earth. Bang! Greatest show. Look, look. In the fucking multiverse. Bang! And we have a great show for you today. <laughs> You're welcome. Bang! We have a great show for you today from the multiverse. Luck, luck, brothers. Straight from the daggone multiverse. I just, I just beamed in. I'm good to go. We're ready to rock. Brothers and brothers and sisters. Daggone, folks. <laughs> I mean, here comes the onslaught of the banksters. Q4. Wow. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the onslaught of the banksters. Oh, yes. I mean, when the OCC said that, you know, all right, American American banks get custody stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, that was the super amazing news of the year. But shit. What it's, un what it's unleashing? Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful Finally, beautiful thing. All right, so let's check it out. All right, so, pfft, all right, so, again, like, there's not even any onboardings. It's just bankster talk, so. Fidelity and BlockFi are going to accept Bitcoin for loans. Ah! Are you going to be able to give Fidelity, well, not you and me, not, not, it, this is an institutional, institutional thing, but you can put Bitcoin down and get a loan. And then, uh, yeah, I just pay the loan back when you feel like it. And and then you get your Bitcoin back once you pay back the loan. And what's interesting is that even if your Bitcoin goes up while you're paying off the loan, yeah, they just give you the whole Bitcoin back. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll talk about that when we get there. It's an interesting little concept. All right, and then Standard and Charters is going to launch crypto custody. See, now they're all getting into custody. Yeah, well, once you're into custody, well, fuck if you're a hedge fund. And you bank with this bank already, you're gonna be all right, great. <laughs> Just give me the custody too. All right, we'll talk when we get there. Ah, uh, and then bang, government stuff. The G7 nations had their little meeting, and they have agreed that crypto needs regulation. So a uh, G7, I guess, standard or something like this, we're gonna read about. And then we're gonna do the usual shout outs and the bang daily summary. Yeah, so we get to hear me summarize all the yap yap of the yap yap. <laughs> all right, so let's begin. How we begin? Let's proceed. Bye. Yes. Oh yeah, get to hear me yap yap about the yap yap. That's the fun part of the show. He's yap yapping about yap yap. <laughs> all right, guys. Look, settle down. You're having too much fun now. Settle down. All right, what we got here? Price of Bitcoin, 18548 <laughs> Oh, my God. It's really just bouncing around like a motherfucker, isn't it? Look. All right. Price of Bitcoin, $18,548. When I left you yesterday, actually this morning because it's still Wednesday. Look. When I left you earlier today, earlier in the, oh, oh wait, whoa, whoa. Earlier this morning, it was $17,958. So we've gone up. Right, let's check it out. How much have we gone up? So we've gone up. $590. Oh, $590. All right. Look, look, Bitcoin. Getting wily again. Getting rowdy. Up and down all the time. Oop. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, top 10 of the day, brothers and sisters. Look, look. You know what it is. These usual daggone suspects and miscreants. Look, top 10 of the day. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Tether, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Chainlink, Cardano, Polkadot, and Binance Coin. All right, let's see what we got going on. Eh, not much going on here at all. Single this up, single this down. I'm going 
gonna sip around these motherfucking parts around here. All right, singleton's up, singleton's down. Uh, oh, but look at you, Stellar. 8% up. Uh, it's not too shabby, not too shabby. All right, singleton's up, singleton's down. Single this up, single this down. No oh, V chain, you're back down there. Single this up, single this down. Actually, everybody's back down a little bit. Single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down. Single this up, single this down. Two. Single dits up, single dits down. All right. All right, good enough. All right, let's see who lost money today. You see any, whoops. Let's see who lost money today. You see anything on here you like? Go get it because it's on sale. Bah. Yeesh. Top 10 losers of the day. Amplifor, Theta, Zcash, Hedge Trade, Sidecoin, Numerair, Monero, uh, NEM, Bitcoin Gold, and Bitcoin SV. Let's see who made money today. Hmm. Top 10 gainers. Top 10 gainers. Nexo, Stellar, Waves, Sushi Swap, Nano. Oops, one second. Nano, Celsius, Ethereum Classic, Compound. Uh, Avalanche, Ave, and Polkadot. All right. Let's see who told Mark Cap is. All right. Now we have a fucking proper market cap. Jeez, um, like that bullshit last night was just a bunch of nonsense. All right. It said 194 in market cap. You crazy? Fuck. All right. So this is probably more the realistic number. All right. So today's market cap is 551. Point nine billion dollars, and so yesterday's market cap was just a bunch of bullshit. So there's no point in telling you we've gone up and all that because that was just nonsense. So let's just move on to the uh, 24 hour volume. So 24 hour volume. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, more realistic numbers. All right, 158.5 billion dollars in uh, in 24 hour volume. And when I left you yesterday, we were at 118.3 billion dollars. In 24 hour volume, so we've gone up uh, 40.2 billion dollars. All right, bye. Let's move on. Look, look, let's get to the stories. All right, bang, bang. It's all bankster time now, isn't it? Bye, right? It's all bankster talk and uh, new investment vehicles and stuff, but now quality investment vehicles, you know, not. Futures contracts on BitMEX, but futures contracts from real shit. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, the upgrade, the upgrade in quality now, and while well, just in regulatory and, and uh, uh, certification level is bang, bang. See, we're going up now. Now we're not worldwide. You notice these stories are worldwide, right? I'm reading you about banks in Switzerland. Gazprom Bank, Spare Bank, all, all unleashing stuff there in Switzerland. Uh, 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 all right. Let's just let's just move on though. Look, uh, Fidelity partner of BlockFi to accept Bitcoin collateral for cash loans. So this is interesting. So yeah, this is for uh Fidelity's institutional clients. Um and yeah, well, they're going to get to put their Bitcoin down to get loans. And so what's interesting about this loan program is, I don't know if it says it in this story, but I read it in another one, is that, so if you give a, if you give them, say you give them, say you have 10 Bitcoin and say Bitcoin's at, I don't know, 20 grand. So that's $200,000 worth, right? They'll give you the $200,000 loan and then you can, you have time to pay back that loan. But when you pay the loan back, you know, maybe you gave them Bitcoins that were worth 20000 when you gave it to them. 
And maybe by the time you pay the loan back, now they're worth 25000 Yeah, well, Fidelity is going to give you back $25,000 Bitcoins back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? It's pretty wild, right? Because Fidelity could say something like, well, you only gave me twenty grand of Bitcoin, so anything that your Bitcoin earns, I get to keep it, right? Nah, Fidelity's like, no, 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 we're going to give you your money back. I mean, we'll give you your Bitcoin back. Uh, just give us our money back that we gave you. So, um, an honest player, a good player, I guess you could say, uh, very being gentlemanly about it, right? And um, I don't know, like, um, isn't this kind of like how the DeFi thing works? Like, people put their money in. Then the DeFi thing gets uh, starts lending out money, and then you, as the person who put your money in to get locked in value, your value locked in, gets paid money or something, right? Actually, I guess this isn't a DeFi type thing. All right, whatever, man. Hold on. Let me just get a sip, and let's get out of here. All right, well, let's begin. Let's get out of the yap yap part. Let's begin to the learning part. All right. All right, so Fidelity Digital Asset Services has partnered with cryptocurrency lending platform BlockFi to allow its institutional clients to obtain fiat loans by pledging Bitcoin as collateral. Under the partnership, Fidelity institutional clients, so this is for institutions, planning on adopting the initiative will be required to create an account on the BlockFi plat blah, on the BlockFi platform to facilitate the loan process. Per the report, Fidelity Investments, the cryptocurrency custodial arm of Fidelity Digital, will provide safe storage for the assets. So Fidelity is going to do the custody. You open an account on BlockFi to get the loan. Uh, Tom Jessup, president of Fidelity Investments, told Bloomberg in an interview today that Bitcoin holders who plan on acquiring acquiring cash loans without having to sell their Bitcoin can use the new initiative. Right? So that's how it is, right? You, you're putting your money in, but you don't, like, it, you know, if you want a loan, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin, so you you give it to them. They give you a loan on what you give them, but then they give you back the Bitcoin. And if the Bitcoin went up in value, you come out kind of the winner. Well, not kind of the winner. You're the fucking winner. Because you've got this loan that you've done whatever with. And and then you get your asset back at an inflated value than when you gave it to them in the first place, right? Um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, well, it's very cool, obviously, as the if I'm the person that's lending the, the Bitcoin. Anyways, Jessup stated that using the popular cryptocurrency to acquire fiat loans is a foundational capability adding that the hopes that he hopes the initiative becomes a vital part of the B BTC ecosystem. He disclosed that instead of using a typical repo trade approach that requires a tri-party agreement, loans will be long-term. We want to develop a world-class brokerage capability for assets of all types, he added. Uh, BlockFi will be tasked with mitigating the volatility risk associated with Bitcoin by providing at least 60% of cash loans backed by the cryptocurrency. Okay, so they're saying here that, oh, BlockFi's got to up 60% of the money for each loan. This tends to manage the losses that may arise. Is that what they're saying there? All right, I'm not exactly sure what that is about. I mean, obviously, it's a new thing. I've never heard of something like this. So um, this tends to manage the losses that may arise if Bitcoin's value plummets and also create room for institutions to enter and grow within the digital asset market. So I guess what they're saying there is, you know, like I just told you, if you give them a $20,000 Bitcoin and then by the time you pay off the loan, it's 25 grand, um, they give you back the 25 grand, the whole thing, your whole Bitcoin back. And so I guess they're saying here, 
if there's losses, I don't know, I guess BlockFi has to up 60% of that or something, of the losses or something. Anyways, look, Zach Prince, CEO and co-founder of BlockFi, commented, having the ability to finance positions is a critical component of financial services infrastructure. And this collaboration reflects an exciting development for the digital asset ecosystem. If you dig, all right. Anything with the word fidelity in it. Anything with the word fidelity in digital asset. Bah! That's all it is. You know what I mean? What are they doing? It doesn't matter. It's bah! <laughs> it's awesome. It's going to be awesome. Oh, guys. I told you. One day you'll see. Oh, yeah. I'll be telling you, guys. Fidelity's offering its first 401k. There'll be tears. Tears of joy. Running down my face. <laughs> tears of ecstasy. Oh, yeah. Shamari, why are you crying? Because it's too good. It's just too good. <laughs> Look, sticks. Look, fuck sticks. Settle down. Fidelity's moved to launch a cash loan package for BTC holders. Comes a few months after the firm's survey suggests that more institutional investors hold the asset. Uh. According to the survey, involving 774 respondents from the U.S. and Europe, one out of three investors hold Bitcoins. Yes. So, Fidelity, Fidelity's findings is backed by recent Bitcoin rally championed by institutional investors' entrance into the market. With the, easily, with the leading cryptocurrency tipped to reach 50,000 by several analysts in the near future, next year, yes. not too many institutional investors who are in dire need of cash will be willing to sell their portfolio at a time when the asset is yet to breach 20 grand. So we'll break 20 grand. So what they're saying. So instead, they would prefer to obtain fiat loans and pledge their Bitcoins as collateral which can be redeemed at any time. And so that's what they're saying, right? So to make this thing work, if you're, a, if you're, if you're, so remember, this is for institutional investors. Well, so if you're an institution that just bought Bitcoin at, I don't know, 15 G, 18 G, whatever, uh, high, 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 uh, high teens. Well, you're obviously thinking that Bitcoin is going to rise. So you're not going to want to give up your Bitcoins for a loan. Right, and so that's why F uh, Fidelity is doing it this way, in that instead they would prefer to tame fiat loans and pledge their bitcoins as collateral, and then they get them back, which can be redeemed at any time. So they can get them back any time they pay back the loan. So, you know what this is good for <clears throat> is for if I'm rich, or well, an institution, hedge fund, whatever, I can dump. Let's say, I don't know, $10 million worth of Bitcoin on this thing and get $10 million worth of cash. And say I could put that $10 million into my Forex uh, trading desk and have those guys trade that for me. Meanwhile, my Bitcoin is sitting with Fidelity just gaining in value, right? So I'm making money off of the loan they gave me and my Bitcoin are gaining value. And then when I just decide to, I could be like, all right, fuck. I just pay back the loan and boom. Yeah, I get these bigger and fatter Bitcoins, right? I gave it to them at 20. Now I get back Bitcoins at 25 grand, right? So you're making money on both levels, uh, at both ends of the transaction, right? That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. And I'm sure, uh, I guess, this place, Fidelity and um, this company here, what's the name of this company again? BlockFi, they're just getting, they're collecting fees. You know, they're collecting some sort of fees. Obviously, they got to make their money, but, right? So that's how they're doing it. Um, just put up your Bitcoin for collateral, but we're not going to take your Bitcoin and we're not freezing your Bitcoin. If your Bitcoin goes up, well, when we give you back your Bitcoin after you've paid back the loan we've given you, you're going to get the, the Bitcoin at its current spot price, right? At its current rate of value, right? Um. Yeah, uh -huh. cool. So there you go. Bye. But that, that's it. That's it. You're, you know, Fidelity, uh, you know, servicing their institutional clients, servicing the institutional clients. All right, let's move on. Bye. Look, look, Standard Charters partners with Northern Trust to launch Zodia, 
a crypto custodian for Bitcoin, Ripples, XRPs, whatever, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. So, um, and here it is again. Like, as soon as the Americans came out and said, ha, 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 lock, lock, we're going to let all our banks just look, look, custody if they feel like it. Well, fuck every country now. Right? It has to do that. Um, ah, uh, <laughs> or get left behind, right? I mean, you know how Americans be. You know how Americans do. You know how Americans get down. Look, look. Right? And so if you want a piece of this action, you got to rock. You got to rock. And so Standard Charters, um, they're a mega bank. And here it is. They're offering custody. All right? So. I'm not sure if this is, hold on, that's just reading, let's see. Hold on, let me get a sip first. And then, uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll like, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and their crypto thing, their custody thing is called Bang Zodia. All right, whatever that means. But what I like to see really about this thing though is that things like XRP, bch ltc i want to see i want to see more um you know small caps being uh played with by these banksters you know custodied by these banksters not played with let's talk like adults custody and offered right that's why i'm so happy about that s p story we read the other day The S and P said they want to offer that digital asset um, exchange, and they're going to have over five hundred coins on that thing, right? That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. Um, all right, more than just the Bitcoin. But anyway, let's move on. We'll get there when we get there. Don't worry. Don't worry, and we will get there. Yes, indeed. So look, one of the leading international banking groups, Standard Charters, has taken its first steps toward cryptocurrency. Well, that banking group, I thought it was a, I thought it was a, a British thing, um, has taken its first steps toward cryptocurrency. Its innovative arm, innovation arm, SC Ventures, announced a partnership with Northern Trust to launch an institutional-grade custody solution for cryptocurrencies called Zodia Custody. Buy! Yes. Institutional-grade. Institutional-grade custody. Yes. So many banking groups around the world have already ventured into crypto in some form or another. Reports suggest that crypto currently represents 0.3% of the world's currency and bank deposits. The values are expected to grow with a compound annual growth rate of 32% from 2019 to 2024. Um, Zodia will provide institutions to invest in crypto, along with enabling transactions and settlement activities. As per the announcement, oh, Zodia has been scheduled to go live in London in 2021. Right, it is British, right? According to the CEO of Zodia, Maxine de, de Guillemot, uh, Zodia was established to address the need for a cryptocurrency custodian that truly understands custody. We combine the risk management, compliance, governance, and security approach of a regulated financial institution by, with the cutting-edge innovation of crypto asset and key management technologies. By doing so, we enable operational efficiency and speed of transaction without compromising on security or reliability. So, this is the big money talk. When Zodia launches, it is set to provide a custody service for digital assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. These digital assets account for almost 80% of the total assets, 395 billion, traded across top cryptocurrency exchanges. Additionally, Standard Charter has also invested in core technology provider, Mataco, and is collaborating with the Bank of Thailand and the Hong Kong Monetary Authority to explore distributed ledger interoperability for cross-border fund transfers. Bang! So, there you go, another one. So, here it is. See how these banksters are just rolling out shit, rolling out services. 
these guys are going to custody as well. And so this is a major player. Standard Partners is like a, you know, a, a, sorry, sorry, Charters. Chartered is like a, you know, it's like a JP Morgan of, of the UK. And so, you know, if you're a hedge fund or whatever, and you want to start playing in the space, yeah, well, you just custody with these guys. I mean, you probably have an account with them already. And so, I mean, oh, so let me, yeah, yeah, let me put it that way. So if you're a hedge fund, you know, while hedge funds have to have accounts, you know, obviously, every business does actually. And so even a Chinese food restaurant. So, but anyway, every every company has an account. So the, these guys have accounts and that's the beauty of, um, these, these, uh, you know, the mainstream banks now coming online and offering custody services is that, all right, well, now the fucking uh, hedge fund guy can really start rocking and rolling. Like he can start actually trading and participating in this market, investing in this space. Um, and yeah, and like I told you, most of these guys, they don't want to custody their own crap. Right to custody, it means you have to go find your own custodian and all this crap. Remember, they're not allowed to put, you know, like a hundred billion dollars of Bitcoin on a ledger for their clients. They're not allowed to do that. So they'd have to go find a custody service, da da da, set up all the infrastructure, all that. Whereas if you're already a hedge fund and you're like and and I have a bank account with all right, if I'm a hedge fund and I have a bank account with bang, standard chartered, well great. Now I can just start, you know, uh, you know, buying and selling and doing stuff and having my stuff custodied uh, with uh, my trusted, you know, financial institution already, right? So that's what's amazing about these banksters coming out is that, well, first of all, they're regulated and licensed. So these institutions are allowed to use these. And then now it also allows them hold on how do i say this when all right so when any of these banks start offering custody services for anything else the small caps well, yeah well uh, the hedge fund guys can easily move in does that make sense right can easily buy those small like so look well one day um, some bank somewhere in the Germans, <laughs> let's, let's pick a German bank, right? Uh, is going to offer custody for, you know, V chain or IOTA, right? IOTA. Cause that's a European thing. And so a lot of hedge fund guys and all that will be able to buy IOTA, right? It's going to be sort of like how here in a, amongst you and I, we're retail investors, right? And you notice in our world. Everyone gets happy when, oh, Coinbase lists something or so-and-so lists something, right? It's, you know, Binance lists this coin or Coinbase lists this coin or Huobi lists this coin, right? Well, it's going to be the same thing, but now in a mega way where, uh, well, in terms of in the re in, in, in institutional way where... It'll be like this, like Standard and Charters is now custodying da 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 da. So now, if you're a hedge fund, you can be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get in." Um, or like that S and P thing we read on Saturday, right? That's gonna make the 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 exchange with the 550 cryptos on it. Yeah, well, every crypto on there is gonna be like, "Yay, it's listed," right? It and, and because it is regulated and licensed, so these hedge funds can get it. So. Whereas you and I, we're happy when, you know, like I said, when Coinbase lists something, <laughs> these hedge fund guys are going to be happy when, right, like the S&P thing lists something because they can only deal with, you know, the big dog stuff, right? I mean, the, uh, you know, the regulated license stuff, right? Whereas we can, you know, we can buy whatever we want from wherever we want, right? Um, so, um it just amazing, just amazing. That's how, you know, this whole market is shaping up all of a sudden. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, hold on, all right. So, you know, just great licensed and regulated um, 
services now that the institutions that we're waiting for can actually use. All right, let's move on. All right. Bang! World governments agree on importance of crypto regulation at a G7 meeting. So, um, obviously, uh, all right, let me get a sip here. I mean, obviously, everyone wants to coordinate their activities. Um, uh, they want to make sure that my banksters can deal with your banksters and blah, 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 blah. So, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, let's have a sip. And then we'll proceed. So, you know, uh, yeah. There's not really much to say, so let's just read. Um, digital asset regulation has been a hot topic in 2020 and shows no sign of cooling. A recent G7 meeting concluded that the sector faces an ongoing need for regulation. In addition to talking about the COVID-19 and economic issues, the group also discussed ongoing responses to the evolving landscape of crypto assets and other digital assets and national authorities work to prevent their use for malign purposes and illicit activities, according to a public statement from the United States Department of Treasury on Monday. So, oops, <clears throat> there is strong support across the G7 on the need to regulate digital currencies. Ministers and governors reiterated support for the G7 joint statement on digital payments issued in October. So regulators have stepped up their engagement in the crypto sector in recent months. The U.S. Department of Justice, in particular, has visited a number of headlines. One of the biggest headlines of the year included the Department of Justice, DOJ, and the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC, going after crypto-native uh, derivatives exchange bitmex for allowing u.s customers so yeah uh we all know yo arthur hayes is still at large they didn't catch these guys yet the bitmex guys so the members of the g7 as well as international monetary fund the financial stability board and the world bank leaders participated in the meeting led by steve mnuchin the u.s treasury secretary the statement said following the meeting germany's finance minister notably expressed concern about Facebook's Libra <laughs> turned DM asset, referring to it as, as a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, yeah. He said, hold on, let me see. All right, so I'll tell you, he said the other day at the meeting, at this G7 meeting, so you know that uh, Facebook's coin that they want to come out with was called Libra, and then they changed it to the word DM, and... So uh, the 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 German finance minister he said uh, <laughs> he said just because you change the name he goes that's not going to work he said a wolf in sheep's clothing is still a wolf <laughs> and so that's what they mean by this yeah 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 that's what he said he said a wolf in sheep's clothing is still a wolf uh, because they tried to change the name well they did change the name. Actually, they're getting in trouble for the name change. But anyway, that's a whole other bunch of bullshit. So Mnuchin tweeted about the meeting earlier on Monday, noting, Productive G7 call this morning. We discussed the effective actions in response to COVID-19, strategies to achieve robust recovery, and buy cryptocurrencies. Yes. So Bitcoin has flown in price over the last few months, putting crypto under the mainstream spotlight. Rumors predict that Mnuchin plans on dropping an impactful crypto-related ruling in the next few weeks pertaining to digital asset wallets. <clears throat> per speculation, the regulation would essentially forbid users from utilizing personal crypto wallets outside of regulation, regulated exchanges. All right. Not really sure what that means, but... But, look, so... Um, uh, this is great news. Um... You can see they're trying to coordinate their efforts. And um, the G7, top seven nations economically in the world. And so, um, yeah, you know, like once there's regulatory clarity, well, everything falls in line. And so 
then the banksters fall in line, and then once the banksters are in line, then the hedge funds and the the players, the cowboys can come, and, and here we go. Then we have a good old market. And so, bang, great news. All right, let's move on. Let us proceed. Bang, what do we got here? They call me, the call, oh, they call me Tim. World traveler, photographer, and adventurer. Follow me on Hive. Marketing technologist of DBU's app. Oh, the Buzz app. All right, let me you the bar. Uh, Bit him. Let me see with the bar. All right. What do we got here? Oops. We got a bunch of them. Look, what do we got? Sunny B, Spy Lady, Lovely Lady, See Lady. Bye. Michael Lyson, listen. Something like that. Founder of the Fleming EMC, electronic music agency. Nice. Brand activator, contract creator, marketer, crypto trader. The revolution is upon us. Look, look. Mikhail. Larry with the Zebra, the bang. Andrew Bacheta, Larry with the Zebra, the bang. Mr. Percy, yes. Love you, Mr. C, Mr. Bye. Radster, our brother from Prague, yes. Holding down the European insurgency. Larry with the Zebra, the bang. Yes, holding down our European operatives. JP Vizo and the Pascu Yaki tribe. Yes, V Chain Masters. Look, V Chain Hodlers. Look, V Chain Killers. Yes. Love you, Chief. See you, Chief. Bye. <laughs> got dramatic with that. Look. What we got? Bitcoin Kong. <laughs> wow. Look, look. Love you, Kong. See you, Kong. Bye. What are you talking? Welcome to the look, look. Yeah. Tell them, Kong. That's how it is. That's <laughs> how it goes down sometimes. So welcome to a little bit of look, look. <laughs> yes. Cream rice to the top, brothers. Look, look. Oh, yeah. Just been a look, look. <laughs> Let me Kong, see you, Kong. One more. Look, look. Bang. All right. With a bang. Let's go. All right. We got here. Justin Levina. Let me see with a bang. Mm, it's crazy Edwin in a bunch. Crazy Edwin. Let me see with a bang. The original. Oh, that's everybody. All right. Oh, what are you talking about here, Binium? I saw this earlier. Binium. CB News, what, Binium? ING, ABM, AMRO, BNP, Paribas, uh, Citibank, Invesco, Societe Generale, and State Street, UBS, and Undisclosed Others announced their crypto custody solution called Pike Door. They're probably getting ready to launch an exchange too. I know, dog. I know when I when you showed me this, but I don't know where you got this information from. But um, yeah, I mean, if that's true, I mean, that's what I've been telling you. Like, ever since the OCC allowed the American banks to offer custody and everything, everybody is now like that's that's the thing. All like, they're not, you know. Um, all right, let me say this. Oh, let me get a let me let. You get comfortable around here. So, yeah, they all are now, you know. Um, they knew it's a new asset class. And, um, well, everyone wants to make money off it. I mean, that's what I've been telling you guys from, from the beginning of this channel. And, yeah, so, and, and but, but this thing that you're reading, that you're showing me right here, it's sort of, it looks like a conglomeration. Daggone, I mean. And that part, I mean, I don't know about the exchange part, but uh, when they're all collaborating like this, well, it, it does make me wonder, like, what do they have up their sleeves? <laughs> you know, you're not just going to, I mean, if you're these countries, you don't have to make a big group like this to offer custody. You could just offer custody yourself. So... I wonder what this Pictor, Pictor thing is and what it what they are trying to make it be. It's interesting. It's interesting. All right, Binium. 
Bah, yeah, I read it, man. I read that. I read that article you wrote. You you sent there. It's interesting. All right. Jimmy News. What medium? The pros are here. Standard Chartered to launch institutional grade crypto custody. Exactly, brother. Exactly. The major British bank is reviewing. Is what? Is rewiring the DNA in banking with crypto custody, of course. Bah. Yeah, it is a British bank. I knew it was a British bank. Yeah. Um, here it comes. And you notice who's offering custody? All these major players. Like, these are major boys we're reading about. Standard Chartered, uh, Gazprom Bank, Spare Bank, uh, that other little, the, the, one, the one bank in India we read about a couple weeks ago. Uh, right? These are the major guys. And so when major guys are offering stuff like this, well... Yeah, well, they're not stupid. They know, obviously, these services are going to be used. And um, um, you know, um, <laughs> what am I trying to say here? Um, fuck, what am I trying to say here? You know, they, they just see that you don't offer a service if it's, you know, if it's not going to be used. And so... They see that big institutions want into the space. And what I've been telling you in this channel is that when the institutions start arriving, that's when our crypto is going to keep on rising and stay up, up, up. In fact, the next thing I want to do is see, I want to see crypto Bitcoin go above 20 and stay there, stay there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Don't worry about it. But that's what's happening ever since the OCC here in America gave, gave green light gave a green light to the American banks. Yeah, well, it's just global now, right? It's a copycat world. Uh, everyone wants to do it now. So, and they're letting their banks do it now. So, yeah, just get ready for liftoff. <laughs> look, look, airdropper. Son of a bitch. Look, <laughs> bye, look, <laughs> bye, look, <laughs> bye. Not you. I'm gay. Son of a bitch. Look, but see, brother. Bye. No, Xavier. All right, a couple more. Sloppy, holding down the north. Labor the Jeep of the bar. And last one, Wesley. Well, not the last one. Labor the Jeep of the bang. I saw you there, Brawlies. Yes, yes, Brawlies. I saw you there. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bang. All right, that's good enough. Bang. Let's get back to the bang. Welcome back to the Death Star. Look, look. So we had a great show for you today. Bang. Oh, yeah, and so like you see these these shows the past little while here, well the past like week and stuff, it is just chock full of banker talk, right? There was no banker talk. <laughs> there was no banker talk. We didn't talk banker talk. <clears throat> uh well, since I've started this flipping channel, right? Like I've been telling you there'll be some banker talk, but it, it never actually occurred yet. I mean, obviously we knew it was going to come, but you know we got fidelity talk. Banker talk, G7 talk, regulations. I mean, this is all of it. You know, just whoosh, washing in now, washing in. This is what we need. This is what we've been waiting for. This is what we have been waiting for. For far too long. <laughs> for far too long. Three years. Dag talk. You guys know me. I'm a Forex trader. I cash my money out every Friday. Fuck. I'm just in this shit for the long haul. <laughs> Yo, long haul. All right. So let's check out the stories. Fidelity and BlockFi. Accept Bitcoin for loans. Hmm. From institutional investors, from institutional investors. And so, um, well, very simple. Give me give me 20 grand worth of Bitcoin, I'll give you 20 grand worth of cash. When you pay me back the 20 grand worth of cash, I'll give you back your Bitcoin. But what's beautiful about that is, if I give you a 20 grand Bitcoin now, and say a year later I pay you back your the loan you gave me, the 20 grand, but the Bitcoin's at 28 grand, yeah, well, you get the twenty-eight grand back. 
Now the whole Bitcoin back. You just get the Bitcoin back, not the amount of money you put into the thing, but just the Bitcoin back, no matter what cost it is. Um. So, uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty much a win win. If you're the the person taking out that loan, you know, as long as you know you're gonna make money and pay that thing back, I mean, that's great stuff. That's great stuff. So, bang. Fidelity, so you know, fidelity, you know, like we've talked about here, they're they're working with the institutional stuff now, and eventually, once soccer mom and dad get it, yeah, yeah, they'll 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 unleash the the good stuff, the four hundred one ks, the retirement funds, all that stuff that I've been talking about all this time. All right, and then so bang, fidelity, and then standard and charters. Launches crypto custody, and so pff, standard charters, baby, ma major bank in, in in from London. You know, it's like a, it's like a Charles Schwab of London. It's like a J.P. Morgan of London, uh, of England, U.K. Right, uh, big dog, big name. Uh, all right, they're offering crypto custody, and so, well, all those London hedge fund boys, uh, and high net worth individuals, small uh, home offices, and all that. Well. They're not going to have a problem. Uh, sorry, that's not the word. They're not going to have any fear <laughs> custodying with Standard and Charter because, fuck, they probably already have a bank account with them already anyway. And so, um, as you can see, these banking, these banksters all around the world, since the OCC in America has, uh, has given the green light to Americans to, OC, uh, to custody crypto, you see just banks around the world beginning to custody 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 and so uh uh, ha. uh it's just great it's amazing and remember these are regulated uh, licensed banks and everything and so yeah if you're a hedge fund you have no problem absolutely zero like i said if you're a hedge fund you probably have a fucking account with standard and charted already right like there's no problem it's a seamless Seamless integration of crypto into your hedge fund operations um, or whatever operations, any fund. I mean, it doesn't even matter. Not a hedge fund. I mean, maybe you got a little, I don't know, whatever. You know, you got a little fund and you custody with here now and you want to get in the crypto space. So amazing, amazing. And that's what we've been looking at, you know, uh, since the OCC just. worldwide you know worldwide company uh, cut, uh major banking institutions are starting to custody the crypto and that's the beginning of the whole thing without custody there is no market you know there is no market without custody someone's got to hold the assets and someone's got to hold the money <laughs> trusted you're not going to give 500 dollars to some dude and go like all right dog i trust you just trade the money for me fuck no Right, you want to make sure it's in some regulated, licensed place, and uh, <laughs> you know, like I told you, I mean, I've told you guys all that. I mean, I've taught you guys. I mean, you know, your TD Ameritrade account, yeah, your money is not with TD Bank. It's in. If you read the fine print of your little agreement or whatever with TD, yeah, it'll probably say your money is held in Geneva, blah 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 LLC, blah blah blah, like this. Yeah, read it, read that shit. You'll see. And that's the importance of custody. All right, let's move on. Bye. And then the G7 governments agree that crypto needs regs. Well, there you go. And it's not just the regulations. Of course, we need regulations. Of course, we need uh, regulatory clarity and all the usual blah, blah, blah I've been talking about here. But um, it's good that um, at such a high level meeting, these guys are. Uh, Um, you know, taking their time out to say, look, this is now a priority, right? Like you saw when we read it, it said Steve Mnuchin, <clears throat> he said, we talked about this and this and cryptocurrency, right? So cryptocurrency was the third one on the list right there. And so that shows priority and that's it. That's it. We're, it's a, pri it's prioritized now. 
especially with Libra about to come out next year. No, I guess it's not called Libra anymore. It's called DM. The Facebook's DM coin is coming out next year. And uh, <laughs> what did we just read? Oh, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, German, the German finance minister, he said that, you know, uh, DM, the, the, the Facebook coin is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And actually, I, I read a whole I read a whole article about what he said about about Facebook. And actually, the real quote that he really said was because he was he was he was um, they asked him a question like, oh, you know, um, Facebook changed its name, their, their coin from Libra to DM. And he said, look, <laughs> what did, he said, um. A wolf in sheep's clothing is still a wolf. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, the Germans, like, like, the Germans. No, nah, no, nah, they don't like that, that Libra, the DM, not Libra, it's called DM now. They don't like that Facebook DM thing. And that's what he said. He said, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Look, look, that's still a fucking wolf. <laughs> and so we'll see how this Libra thing, or DM, DM. Now we'll see how this DM thing goes. But yeah, yeah, the Germans, nah, they're not taking too kindly. They're not taking too kindly to it. Nah, nah, they're not taking too kindly at all. <laughs> okay, but anyway, but the G seven, right? They, you know, they said, all right, we got to have standard regs, and that's the reality. Just like we have in our stock markets, our bond markets. Right, they're all compatible with each other, right? So I'm assuming that's what they're talking about here, and hopefully that occurs. All right, that's enough. Let's shill it and kill it. Let's get you back to your wives and lives. Bang, subscribe below, press the bell. Oops, subscribe below, press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. Look, look, great show on earth. Look, good show. Ugh. The multiverse. Look, look, my name's Shamar Clark. Love talking money. Bang, love talking crypto. Bang. It's my favorite time of my day. So thanks for having me in your home, and I will see you tomorrow. So until then, subscribe here. Bang. Also press that thumbs up, please. Uh, and then watch that video here. Bang. Greatest in the multiverse. And I'll see you tomorrow. My name is Shamar Clark. Always watching our money. And bang. Always on duty. Look, look. Bangster time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love you guys. Over and out.